What's up, everybody? How you doing? It's your man, Phil Williams. This is Philosophy. Wow, man. Thank you guys for tuning in today, man. Just something is just really, really getting to me, and I just wanted to share this today. And um, we know that this election is right around the corner. Willie Glenn, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for joining me on this uh, Saturday. I know it's short notice. Hope you guys are enjoying your families, enjoying your days. But anyway, uh, how you doing, uh, Denise? Uh, man, just a lot of things going on. You know this election is right here. Christine, a step. how you doing, Christine? Hope everybody's doing well in your family. I always have you guys in my prayers. Becky Sellers Morris, how you doing? You know our, this election is right around the corner, but I think what I'm about to share with you today, it has to go past this election. Regardless of what the result of this election is, Lita, how you doing? How you doing, Lee Whitener? Hey, tell Carly I said she looks awesome in her karate uniform, she, yellow belt. Tell her to keep it moving. Mark Aaron Thomas, how you doing, buddy? But what I'm hope I'm sharing, Barry Heron, um, how you doing, Barry? It has to go past this election. This election is just like other elections. It's just the biggest thing ever. It's it's. The world-ending election and this and that and third, this and that and the third. Ron Cable, how you doing, Ron? This election is, is huge. It's big. It's telling. Well, how we got here is way more telling than where we're at. How you doing, Robert Vinson? Man, great post the other day, man. I totally concur where you were coming from, uh, Rob. Totally. Joshua Johnson, how you doing, Joshua? Jeremy Hansen. Jeff course how you doing how you doing amy hollis yes it's field time but anyway i can say what's up to you guys all day james cavanaugh how you doing buddy but this this is what brought me here today karen copeland first lady i'm sorry a hey, happy anniversary mom love you guys see you guys tomorrow church can't can't wait but anyway cliff what's up cliff man thank you for your prayers everybody this is why this election has to be it's got to be monumental big it's got to be Put in this perspective, I'm watching the media, I'm watching the president, I'm watching everybody else. But the thing that caught me this time was the tone. They're talking about the president's tone. And they're saying that how he's seeing the tone. They're using these tragedies. And of course, let's keep the families of these tragedies, all the people that were targeted by the pipe bombs. But more so, the tragedies that are happening that don't make the news. There's tragedies that happen in this country that don't make the news. And this is where I want to come from today. Because they talk about the president's tone. And they talk about it in a way, because this is how political people do. This is how media outlets, they have an agenda. And this is how even us that might have an agenda and things like this. This is how we talk. We got to, first of all, Got to find somebody to blame. We got to find somebody to point the finger at. We, we, we have a hard time accepting responsibility for the parts that we play, even if it are, the part we're playing is in response to. Like, no one has ever taught us how to, to respond to something. Like, we totally forgot how to ignore certain things and, and how to just, add, just leave it in God's hands and things of this nature. But I want to talk about this tone that they continue to blame the president for. See, the president's not setting a tone, people. Let's be very clear. The president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, is not setting a tone. He is orchestrating a symphony. See, the tone was already set. Donald Trump is the byproduct of a tone that was already set. And he's capitalizing on that tone. And now he's conducting a symphony. He's playing folks. He's playing that funky music white boy. He's, he's, he's doing something, capitalizing on something that already existed. Donald Trump is exposing a tone and conducting a symphony with it. And just like any other symphony, if classical music is not your thing, there is a segment of the society where classical music is their thing. And he's playing their tune. But the tone 
is our responsibility. Why? Because we've allowed media, electronics, AI, um, experience. We were lazy as crazy. We've allowed other people to school our children versus us taking responsibility for their education. The people that support Donald Trump now were children yesteryear. Will somebody take responsibility for how they were schooled? To where they're susceptible to this classical pandering playbook that Donald Trump is conducting? See, we set the tone. See, let me give you an example. Donald Trump's not the first person to lie habitually from the pulpit of, po of political punditry. He's not the first one. But you won't accept the fact that your favorite politician has been lying to you. See, Donald Trump is the first one that they just chose to count how many lies. Don't forget, your favorite politician has been lying to you, telling you that if he, has, he or she has your vote, they're going to repeal Obamacare. You can get caught up in if it should be repealed or not be repealed, but they've been lying to you. It's just nobody was counting it. And now that you are being presented to how your politician has been lying to you, one, you can't admit that he's been lying to you. Two, you've been bought, in, you're bought into this notion that he, he or she must have this seat. We can't survive without it. And the boogeyman that you want to blame is Donald Trump's tone. See, your politician has been a liar way before Donald Trump just decided to run. It's just Donald Trump's is being counted. You don't understand why Donald Trump is being counted now. Because Donald Trump was able to lie or register as a Republican, and now every lie he tells sticks to your guy. But it's not that it really sticks to your guy. It's that your guy has been lying all along. See, this is how I can prove it. How could any evangelical Christian, how can any Republican or conservative switch and turn into the massive hypocrite that they are so fast, so rocket ship fast, if it wasn't in them in the first place? How could they just abandon these principles that they begged you for their vote for, that they promised you they stood for, that, that the rating score and the conservative score said they were. How could they switch so fast if it wasn't already in them? How could Rush Lip Balls, this conservative, point out everything liberal that smells, tastes, talks, hides, and everything? How can he all of a sudden defend liberalism Try to convince you that it's some kind of new form of conservatism if he wasn't a liar in the first place. See, Donald Trump's not setting the tone. He's exposing the music that lulled you into making sure you protect liars. To make sure that you're now the hypocrite. See, we're the tone. They represent us. We have to own up to the fact that, guess what? We're living a lie. How can we support somebody? We see abandoning Jesus on the sideline. How can we continue to support some people that is crucifying Jesus Christ all over again if it wasn't already in us? Are you trying to tell me that a policy, an earthly policy, is worth your eternal salvation? See, we can support people that's crucifying Christ all over again because there's something in our lives that crucifies Christ at our whim, at our desire. See, it's in us. And I'm saying us, even though you know 
then I'm not participating in this foolishness. But it's we t all for one, one for all. So I'm lumping myself in this too because only we the people will get this thing straight. Only us. But it's going to take us doing something that put us on this track of being punished for sin in the first place. We have to stop recreating the sin that Adam and Eve did in the beginning. We have to stop blaming others. We have to stop blaming God. We start to stop giving God credit for stuff he doesn't want credit for. And we have to stop giving the devil credit for stuff that he does not need. We, the people, have to admit this blame game is having us punished over and over and over again. Once we stop blaming others and we just admit that this tone is our tone. Donald Trump's not setting the tone of bigotry and, and racism and nationalism. He's not setting that tone. He's just conducting the orchestra. They went back and picked up their instruments. And now they're out there with their band of Confederate nationalism, white supremacy, KKK stuff. They're out there with their band and Donald Trump is just conducting. He's just, that's why he waves his hands all the time. He's a massive conductor. That's all he is. He's just conducting. But you keep blaming him when you should accept responsibility for it. There was something inside of you that has an issue with immigrants. Now, this hear me very clear. I'm going to make this comparison. For all of us never Trumpers, and for all of us that's not never Trumpers, for all of us conservative, true conservative Christians, and everybody that's jumping on this bandwagon of the migrants that Donald Trump is conducting like Fiddler on the Roof. You kind of put me in the mindset of Black Lives Matter. And how is that? Because they're massively selective when it comes to which Black Lives Matter. They never march for the 93% of black people that's killed by black people or young black men killed by black men. They never march for that. They only march for the selected police brutality points. Not that police brutality doesn't exist. I'm not saying that. But they just never include the other part where black lives seem to not matter. They never include the marching at the abortion clinics where it seems the black lives don't really matter to them. See, the same thing is happening with these migrants. While you are ready to jump on the bandwagon to stop this band of people coming to our borders to kill us. Why are you being selective and not stopping the band of people that's right now infiltrating your children through the music and through sin? Those people are more dangerous than people two months away coming across the border. See, you're sounding like Black Lives Matter to me. Our children are being invaded right now. They're being invaded by our selective looking. Do you know all the people in America right now through the media and the TV that's invading into your children's principles, your children's futures, your children's souls, your children's understanding of Jesus Christ, your children's understanding of anything, just basic respect for you. That should be more concerning to you than what's happening at the border. How much money have you spent to help these people invade into your children's future, your children's dreams, to hijack and suck the life out of a, a God-given life and purpose that your children have. How is these people across the border more dangerous than the ones that's inside of America? How? It's not that we don't address that. But we can't be selectively outraged to the point to where good Christian Americans is saying we should shoot people throwing rocks at us. 
This is where we're at now. See, Donald Trump didn't set that tone. There was something like that inside of you already, and you are allowing Donald Trump to conduct that hypocrisy or that selective outrage like a fiddle. Just like how the Democrats do Black Lives Matter. All lives matter, people. The people coming across the border, yes, they probably need to be addressed. I'm not saying just open the borders and let them in. But man, before we start getting apoplectic over something that's not here yet, what are we doing about what is here? What is invading your children right now? While you're directed over a border. Like it's the biggest thing since sliced bread. See, that tone was already in us. Selective outrage was already in us. Hypocrisy was already in us. Now, Tuesday's coming. And what's being spoken about and demanded and read, read alerted and run real Robinson, danger, 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 danger. What is that? What's happening is this. You again are begging, arguing, beating, slapping, kicking, spitting, blocking, unfriending, besmirching, defaming for another political solution. Democrats are saying Democrats are the solution. Republicans are saying Republicans are the solution. But if you go and look at the tone that is set, politics is not the solution. We are. How we decide to treat one another. While politics does its hypocritical thing and just light fires and make you think that all the water in the world has to be directed to that fire and they're the only ones qualified to hold this massive fire hose. You're forgetting the capabilities that you have through Christ Jesus. Why isn't any of the Republicans or the Democrats push pushing Christ as a solution? Why are we about to possibly elect a whole bunch of Democrats that purposely make sure Christ is not the solution? Why are we allowing preachers from the pulpit to say that some politician is the solution when they're supposed to be knowing that it's Christ Jesus through you? You can do all things through Christ Jesus. Pray for your politicians so that you may have peace. But Jesus Christ is the solution. Your moral compass should come from Christ Jesus. Not from somebody who's scaring the be Jesus out of you about some immigrants, about some Democrats, about some Republicans, about some Phil Williamses, about some Lita Whiteners and Janice Barlow's and Loretta Sessions and Cliff Kelly's. See, you got to be scared of them. And they do it just so you can elect the person that's been lying to you. We just haven't been counting the lies. We're our solution, people. Christ Jesus is our resolution. Let's get resolute on that and watch how we start solving our own problems. Stop blaming. Stop putting God mantles on people that are God awful. So we're not subjected to lesser of evils and and socialist wannabes and nationalists now out of the closets. Come on, people. Donald Trump is just conductor in chief. And he's only satisfied with conducting the people that like his music. They were here all along. Those were American people before Donald Trump decided to run. There was something inside of them that Donald Trump tapped into. So it's not Donald Trump setting the tone. It's Donald Trump conducting the tone. Democrats, Republicans, they're not our solution, people. But since politics is a part of our life, that's why I push third party. If we the people 
Stop letting these people play us like cheap banjos. If you must have politics, bring your morals and values to the third party. Be a solution that we the people provided. And then demand the person representing us go there and protect our ability when the Democrats and Republicans come to shut down the love that we're having for each other. When they go to try to regulate the love, our third party, party politician needs to say no. Even if he's in the minority, Jesus said where two or three are gathered in his name, he's there. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move the mountain of the disingenuous Republican or Democrat. Just trying to let you know that only these two parties can save. This is our responsibility, people. Stop blaming Donald Trump for the tone. We're the blame for the tone. We're the blame for our nastiness. This dude is just the one that poked a hole in the balloon to have us flying around like crazy, making all kinds of noise. That's all he is. There was somebody that poked a hole in the balloon before him and somebody before him and somebody before him. So if you're going to vote for another hole poker, we're not only saddling our children with debt and our grandchildren with debt. We're saddling our children and grandchildren with functioning sin being hidden behind, I like his policies. Knowing damn well you wouldn't want your child to be grabbing anybody by the cuda cudas just for a policy. If you can look at your politician and say, I want my child to have those kind of principles and morals and values, you definitely can't blame Donald Trump for that tone. You need some old Jesus. But if you can say, I don't like his morals and values, but I like his policies. I welcome you into the rank of Judah, Judas. 30 pieces of silver, a tax cut, and you good. But you couldn't leave your president. Everybody say, I want a president that I can have a beer with. Well, guess what? You got one that you can't leave alone in a room with your wife. Come on, people. That's just what I wanted to share today. We're the tone. Who's going to orchestrate you with your jacked up music? Hey, that's what I wanted to share today, guys. That's what I wanted to share. Thank you guys for listening to me today. I love you with everything that I have. Please support the programs that I'm doing out in the community so that I can help our children and our grandchildren have a more positive tone, a more responsible tone, a more godly tone. Support my stuff because I'm getting in between the real invader in our country. That musician, that TV star, that radio personality. I'm getting in between that. I'm not letting little Dookie Stain be the one to talk to our children. I need your support. Go to littlejimmydjpaws.jimdo.com. Make a donation. Please help support this. Yes, people, I'm dead serious. I believe I should be the president of the United States. At best, I should be the vice president of the United States. That's not going to come just because I said I want to do it. That's going to require some work. Is it that I want to get into politics? No. But my Bible says rejoice when the righteous are in authority. I think it's about time for us to want to have somebody righteous in authority. Not just right. But at least it's going to lean on Jesus Christ when we have an issue. And understand that politics does have a place. But what is the moral compass of the politician? Is it the big money donor? Or is knowing that our future lies in a well-educated populace? 
not somebody that can be played like an emotional fiddle and distracted five times from Sunday. I believe Phil Williams is that guy. I'm a little guy. But if 3% of this country can change the definition of marriage, I think 3% of true conservatives can change the direction of our country. Third party people. True conservatives, true Christians. Not some that's going to sell out for a magical R. See, you were a sellout before. So, hey, notice I say we. But I, pick me. Please support what I'm doing, guys. Please support it. Little Jimmy DJ Paz dot Jim Do dot com. Make a donation. No amount is too small. But no amount doesn't amount to nothing. <laughs> hey, love your children. Love your children. Love them to death. Love them. Protect them. The enemy's not coming to the border. The enemy is already in here. The enemy is negativity. The enemy is sin. It's not flesh and blood. It's powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what we have to protect ourselves from, people. And I hope you let me set that tone and get back to the tone that we used to be and leave this place better for our children and our grandchildren instead of letting people talk us into being childish and act like children. Hey, love you guys. Please support what I'm doing. God bless you and enjoy your week.